Welcome to our bit. My name is Maria Vista Tapia Wisdom. I come from the Ministry of Agriculture and with me I have two specialists, Bertut Birkajärvi, research scientist from Natural Research Institute, and Hello. Lisa Pietola, also a research scientist herself representing the Farmers Union. Good morning. Here we, here we want to show you the climate and environmental aspects of our grassland-based milk production. And what do we see here, Lisa? Yes, we see here a typical type of solid soil profile in Finland. You see this dark uh, top layer and then because of the history of plowing, the lighter uh, subsoil and you can also see the roots growing to the subsoil here and you see also that uh, the bedrock is very close so this is a hilly region but down the hill the soil profile is deeper so Perto, why are there so much grasslands in Finland grassland so it's well for Finnish climate short and uh, humid and cool growing season and they start the growing very early in the spring and they grow till the end of the growing season and actually the grassland production as a biological it is the most competitive form of production that we have and we compare to the rest of the Europe but we don't have permanent grasslands why uh, the other hand short growing season then there is long winter and it is the climate is a little bit harsh for many many uh, um, common species in Europe so these species but tolerate the winter they are mostly short-lived and therefore the production goes down rather rapidly by the years so it's difficult that the farmer has to renew the grassland every three or five years and the normal way to do it is to blow it up and then reseed it again but this field is already four years old, but it has been reseeded, overseeded, without plowing, and it looks quite nice now. Thank you, Lisa. What are the benefits for farmers of grasslands? Yeah, grasses, uh, they have three main benefits for farmers. First, feed for cattle, and then energy, and then crop rotation, so that we can uh, have different type of crops and have this uh, carbon uh, carbon capture by the grassland. This is very important. But the, the feed for cattle, we need to have a local domestic uh, feed for our, for our cattle because we have long distances and we need to be self-sufficient. So we don't have corn in, here like in the central part of, um, uh, of Europe. And because the grass is growing so well, also here in southern part of Finland, we should have that grass here, but we don't have uh, so many cattle farms here. So farmers need to find other uses for this grass biomass. And therefore, we must say that uh, the small scale on farm biogas plants, which make use of the biomass of grasses, it is much, much, much needed. And uh, the new, new, uh, in the new future, uh, really the must for Finnish farmers. And then this crop rotation by the uh, grasses, it is very important in order to reduce emissions because uh, then we can uh, uh, till less the soil and also because the very good growing during most of the year, it, it will sequestrate the carbon and bind the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by the photosynthesis. So, to tell a little bit more about the climate impacts of grasslands. The most interesting at the moment is the carbon sequestration and it's, it's also the most difficult question to answer. Uh, the, uh, we need a lot of scientific studies to, to develop the system. However, we have started and uh, we have measured the carbon sequestration in, in Finnish conditions and it is uh, it's, uh, for Timothy red clover mixture, it has been so uh, large, the carbon sequestration, that it has clearly important impact on milk, uh, carbon uh, footprint of milk on mineral soils. So in good conditions, 
where that is of course very much related on weather conditions not too dry not too wet also nutrient levels should be quite <coughs> optimum perhaps more nitrogen than the others and uh, then we have can have remarkable carbon sequestration but then the soil type is in the core of this thing and you see the mineral soil but we also have a lot of organic soils in Finland and there it is the natural process that the organic component is is the composition composing thing and and uh, then the carbon is released to the atmosphere and still in those conditions it is better to have grassland under the so under the uh, paddock because then the emissions of carbon are much less than if you have arable land farming and you plow it up until they till you have a lot of tillage and then less also less photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. And so what are the benefits for the farmers of carbon sequestration? Yep. Uh, so organic matter, it really uh, increases soil fertility and soil structure, soil productivity. And the structure means that if you have heavy rains, the paddles will disappear quickly and also during wet seasons the soil holds the machinery very well and also it has pathways for roots to grow, grow and also for water flows and overall it retains also better soil water and because of these porous aggregates uh, farmers can also work with that kind of soil better because it's smoother and easily to be tilled. So there are quite a number of soil carbon projects in in EU. How would you motivate farmers to join join these projects? Yes, they are very very eager to participate these uh, projects and networks, and I think that they really like to share their experiences on their own farm and show in their local conditions how they would uh, would uh, do and act uh, climate mitigation and, and uh, to adapt the, the changing situation. Thank you. But could you tell us a little bit about the other environmental impacts of grasslands? Um, yes, there's a, there are plenty. In Finnish uh, system, it is very important to note that the animal number per hectare in Finland is low. It's only for uh, in milk systems no, 0 0.6 livestock units per hectare. Therefore, the manure circulation is very reasonable, and and when we add there this strong root system, the grasses the uptake of nutrients is very strong, and therefore nitrogen and phosphorus leaching is actually rather uh, tolerable. It's not not that bad. It's much less than from the arable crops, and uh, also you can well understand how this binds the soil together and the erosion is, is next to nothing. We have measured that several years. And the third would be then biodiversity. In a landscape level, when, when uh, there is gra grain production, grasses, animals, that all together are then increasing the biodiversity value of a certain area. And then I, I must say also the biological nitrogen fixation here you see no clover in this uh, field, but if you use clover, you have a very high potential to fix nitrogen to the system. You can use perennial legumes and they fix much more nitrogen than the annual legumes. That was exactly what I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask you, that how can we make sure that we really have a carbon sink and that we don't lose carbon? That is a challenge to know exactly um, the measurements of carbon fluxes in the soil or carbon content in the soil. There's so much carbon in the soil that if, if you just take soil samples, you cannot have a difference in a year. Five year period is minimum and 10 years period is more reliable. So it's really hard to verify what is the amount of carbon. In scientific systems, we have more possibilities and uh, on the moment, we are doing a lot of experiments and, and science about uh, the management factors farmer can use to increase the, uh, the carbon sequestration. And the first is to have a such a seed mixture that tolerates winter and, and uh, has a high production. Because no production, no carbon in the soil, 
then there will be this uh, including most uh, rather uh, deep rooting species as well as shallow rooting and inc include legumes there that increases uh, uh, carbon sequestration definitely and then uh, using manure wisely and then minimize plowing and I think those are the main factors what we are studying for little bit details as well but that's the main thing thank you one of, one of the main challenges in Finland, as in many other countries, is that the, there is a kind of regional specialization in the uh, production. So most of, most of our milk production is in northern parts of the country. This is quite rare to have, have this kind of thriving milk production farms in, in southern Finland. So at, at the same time, we would like to see uh, crop rotation, we would like to see grasses also here as part, because of the important environmental services they provide. Lisa, how, how would you attract farmers in southern Finland who don't have cattle to, to, to include grass in their crop rotation? Yeah. Yes, uh, our farmers are, are having a grasses and also by crop rotation but the problem is that they should have markets for that biomass so they should have a usage for this biomass and in the way that they can recycle also the nutrients from this biomass so the way is how to promote the biogas plants and that's uh, in our policy policy level also a big challenge now and, and kind of common wish to have this kind of small scale uh, biogas plants uh, on farms and that would help so that we can utilize also without cattle the, 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 the benefits of grasses for our farming. Thank you very much. Actually our new government program has a very strong element of different types of uh, support to, to, to increase the biogas production. It's not easy to find the economics there for small units, but we are really working hard to get there. So, thank you very much. As you can see, grasslands are at the heart of, of Finnish agriculture and Finnish farmers. I hope you, you learn some new interesting things from this point. Thank you. Thank you.